Welcome back to Yoko Marts. My name is Matt and today is a throwing day. I'll show you what I want to be making. I made these this little like bottle, water bottle, something, olive oil maybe. I don't know. I really like the shape of it and I really like the little handle. I haven't made many handles like this ever. It's just a pinched handle, so I figure it's a good opportunity to practice that, and um, yeah. So I will see you at the wheel in just a second. So here I am at the wheel. I'm gonna throw another one of those um, one of those bottles and kind of talk through how I do it. So I've got two pounds of clay, and that is not stuck to the wheel. Pro tip, if the clay does not stick to the wheel and start sliding around, stop the wheel and just push it down. And then take your time. So because it's loose, I'm putting downward pressure mostly right now to get it stuck to the wheel. And then also I'm using these fingers at the very bottom to kind of seal um, where it joins the wheel head. So pretty good. Now I'm just gonna work on getting this centered. Water and cone center it down. See as I'm coming down I'm hooking my thumb over the top like that to keep it from wobbling too much. Yep, I'm gonna get that centered. It's pretty close. And also, instead of always going for water, I like to just scoop a lot of the slip and I just get that because that keeps the clay lubricated and I don't have to oversaturate it with water, which is always helpful. That's pretty well centered right there. I'm just gonna clean my hands off a little bit. <clears throat> Open it. I like to support my thumb with these fingers. Um, that's really just to preserve my joint health for a long term. Just open that up. I'm gonna open the base just a little wider than I want the final form to be. Because as I pull, the clay's gonna get come in at the base a little bit. You'll see what I mean. Right now, just compressing the bottom. And start pulling up. And you can see, because I'm about to start pulling up, and you can see I've got this finger on the outside supporting it, and that's gonna keep the, um, the rim up here, it's gonna keep it in line and help it from, um, help it not flop around and get out of control. And you can see how my hands are together, moving together, they're touching and yeah because you don't want your outside hand moving faster than your inside hand you want them to move as a single unit I guess almost like it's one hand pulling but it's two hands and there we go Now I'm gonna start bellying out because I want it to be a skinny spout, skinny neck, and then belly out to one big belly on the bottom. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. Just 
slowly belly that out. I don't want the wheel going too fast right now because that, if the wheel's going too fast, then you really risk it um, being thrown off center and get real wobbly or the walls can start to buckle. And I don't want that to happen because I want this to be a really nice bottle. It's hard to be a nice bottle if it collapses and is destroyed, so. Another belly out. I'm gonna go back in just on the inside, just to refine that shape. making some lovely sounds right there. It's an old wheel, so it's okay. Um, so now I'm about, I'm ready to start collaring in the neck, but before I do that, while I can still fit my hand in, I'm gonna sponge out just the extra moisture. And that looks pretty good. Clean up my sponge. And now, I want the outside to be nice and moist as I color it in because I don't want there to be too much friction between my hands and the clay. That'll just create more problems. So I'm gonna really wet my sponge and just get that part just above the shoulder, nice and wet. And using six points of contact, just Slowly collar in. Do one more. And it's a good idea when you're making a skinny neck vase bottle or whatever. After you do a collar like that, do a small pull. The benefit of doing that is um, sometimes you'll notice as you're coloring in, the rim here will start to wrinkle and really wobble. So if you do that and then do a pull, you'll kind of just smooth out the clay and you'll be able to avoid a lot of issues. So the inside is actually getting pretty dry. So I'm just gonna wet my fingertips and just hold them right there. Cause I don't want to add too much water because it's getting too skinny for me to add my, uh, to sponge it out and I don't want there to be a big pool on the bottom. Add some more water to the outside and do that again. stuck to the ruler.
and I want it to bevel inside. I want it to kind of flare or angle out, not flare really. So I'm going to have my thumb supporting the outside so it doesn't flare out and I'm just going to add a little bevel so that way the stopper can fit nice and snug in there. Just touch up the top, the bevel. I'm going to grab my little chamois leather. Smooth that right out. Now, just even out because there's a bit of slip on the middle or in the spout there. So I'm just smoothing that out so it looks good. All right. And that's just about good. I'm just going to touch up the section right there with my rib and then double check here get that lip nice and defined and there's a few little burrs here that'll be easy to um, to clean up later and then I'm gonna take my rib Cut away down here, so I've got a little bit of an undercut. Now double check it. Maybe go in a little more. Now I'm going to take my metal rib, clean it off a little bit, <clears throat> and this is mostly to just get the slip, the extra slip off of it, so I can pick it up easier, and it'll help get the. Um, this belly nice and round. I'm just gonna clean that up. That looks pretty good. Just clean up the neck here. see it's wobbling a bit that's okay because I'm almost done I'll stop right there All right. Huh. <laughs> be careful about that because now I've got this big gouge because I wasn't paying attention to the rib so pay attention to where your tools are <laughs> Oh well, it adds character. I'm actually going to try to clean that up. There, that looks pretty good. You know, I'm actually going to leave that. I'm not going to bother trying to clean that up because I don't know, it's just kind of cool. It's a good shape. Happy accident. So now I'm going to use my sponge, just clean off the wheel. Clean off the wheel head. And get my wire tool. And I like to put my fingers like where I hold the wire. I like to hold it just a little wider than the actual base of the pot. That just, I don't know, for me, I mean you could Hold it all the way like this, but I think holding it like that, you get more control. Nice and tight, wheel spinning, and just slide it through. I like to clean off my wire, and then get my hands nice and clean and dry. And then using as much surface area as possible, and I don't want to mess up that using my entire hand, palm and fingers. All right, so here's the bottles that I made. There's one, two, and three. And I'm pretty happy with them. Um, looking at them now compared to this one, I'm thinking this top section 
on the three new ones might be a little small um, because I'm planning, I'm wanting to put these stoppers on them. So these might be just a little short for this type of stopper, which is okay because if I can't, if I can't put the stoppers on them, they'll still be um, a functional uh, bottle or functional pot or something. Uh, you can put a cork in it or something like, they'll still be fine or a base. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Um, yeah, see more of my work. Links below to my website and Instagram and until next time, thanks for watching.